Christian Malik, JP Morgan head of oil and gas research joining us. Christian, what's your take on this? Is there a more longer term demand picture fear here or is this going to just be transient? I think the transient nature of demand is that we the expectations going into the summer is that we'd see uh, vaccine penetration, vaccine efficacy, and unlikely to see another wave through Europe. And what's transpiring is that clearly demand isn't responding in a straight line. There are bumpy patches, and I think oil prices are having to sort of reprice where inventories may normalize, likely to be pushed out now. Um, we're expecting the, the US average inventory level to be achieved uh, by, by July um, and Europe OECD inventories to be achieved or average levels to be achieved um, by the summer too. So the fact that we're seeing demand slower means inventory, uh, inventory levels will not be achieved in that way. I think all prices are having to correct around that, but it's transient in the sense that we are seeing demand recovery in the second half uh, as opposed to something structural. In terms, so this is about Europe. Like the headlines over the last few days have been Europe lockdowns being extended. We've just seen the German right. one being extended. The UK, like if you go to the airport in the UK, you can face a £5,000 fine, apparently, yeah. uh, if you're not meant to be there. I, 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 are these the kind of headlines that have caused this? Absolutely. I think sentiment around uh, mobility has probably gone incrementally negative by a function of uh, policy deterring movement across Europe, and now you have these lockdowns re-emerging. But again, uh, this very much feels like um, a bumpy road for demand growing uh, uh, and rising through the second half, but not necessarily in a straight line. And I think these types of pullbacks uh, are pullbacks where we'd be stepping in to take advantage. And if anything, I'd argue that when you see volatility in oil, um, what that does is create discipline for producers as they think twice about drilling, like, for example, in mm -hmm. shale or raising capex. So there is this sort of silver lining through vol, which is painful, but actually potentially the medicine that the oil market needs to keep the brakes on capital. So do you think that shale players are going to maintain that discipline, even if oil prices resume, resume their upward trajectory from here? I mean, what's the threshold that mm. that's just too enticing and they have to drill? Yeah. You're right. I think, I think, first of all, they're terrified on OPEC. OPEC have, you know, seven, eight million barrels of spare capacity, which they could act on in, in, at any point in time. I think this oil price move, by the way, will probably see OPEC roll over cuts as opposed to add, add volumes into the market. But then they're also terrified by their shareholders. Uh, you know, CEOs I think will, will have to think very hard about growing volumes, given the, the behavior and sort of the cash or lack of cash discipline in the past. And thirdly, now the volatility in oil. Just when you're about to start drilling, you could see a major pullback. So these are the com combination of those factors, I think, will see shale volume uh, muted through this year and with very little growth next year. And those are types of things we need in order to see a sustained deficit in the oil market once we see demand recover. Christian, can I just come back to the demand side? Um, how much destocking are we seeing? Actually, it's a supply demand side yeah. question, kind of one to the other. Yeah. How much destocking are we seeing at the moment? How far through that destocking process are we? And when do you think mm. the Chinese buyers return in size? I think the Chinese buyers are already sort of looking elsewhere for oil. There are discussions around whether they're buying from Iran. I think it's unlikely that we have major volumes in size coming from Iran above you know, two to 300,000 barrels. So in that sense, it's likely that they'll step in when oil prices pull back. So these are type, this type of oil price where sort of sub 60 could start to, it could be conducive to restockpiling uh, through China. We've already had concerns from India that they're not getting enough volume from, from, from OPEC and Saudi, which tells you that there is underlying demand growth from the Eastern Hemisphere. So it's likely that this oil price at this point will see a, re a reverse and stockpiling resuming, uh, particularly out of, out of China and potentially other, other, other countries within the Eastern Hemisphere. Yeah, and we heard Aramco talking about this in its results earlier this week. Right. Amin Nasser, the CEO, was very bullish on the demand outlook for both India and China. But I'm wondering how much downside risk you think there could be to that equation, given India is dealing with another surge in the virus. And in China, mm. that rebound in growth seems like it is slowing down. I think the risk is, is that we see potentially all prices correct uh, another 5 to 10 percent. Uh, but at that point, what you're seeing is a much more positive outturn for a deficit in the medium term, let's say in the second half, because what, you know, every day the oil price goes down is ultimately bullish for inventories normalizing the future because it, it, it keeps that supply back, whether it be OPEC holding back on volumes or the industry uh, being very reluctant to drill. So with that oil price downside, it's still a positive risk reward over the medium term only because 
We know that demand will ultimately recover. We have a backstop, which is, which is the vaccine. We'll let you get that in a minute, Christian. <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's, talk, uh, let's talk a little bit about what happens with the dollar. The sense seems to be that we are going to get a weaker dollar because the US is going to be spending significantly, opening the fiscal taps, and that is going to deliver a weaker dollar. But on the other hand, you've got a weak eurozone at the moment, uh, and the ECB is continuing to step up in size yeah. and buy bonds and provide, provide monetary stimulus. So it, it's a really hard call, I think, at the moment. What kind of numbers are you plugging in in terms of your expectations where the dollar goes? And by implication, what does that mean for the oil price? Yeah, it's a, you're absolutely right. I think the dollar has created some complexity in terms of the oil price volatility that we're seeing. It's clearly conducive uh, when we see uh, when we see weakness. But I would argue this: that right now, I think the main sort of debate among the buy side, particularly oil market macro investors, is how does the deficit evolve for the next three months? If we even if if, if we see an all else equal on currency, is there going to be a deficit that's sustainable? Or are we going to see a deficit arise as and when demand recovers and supply come back, whether it be shale or OPEC? So in some ways, I would argue that the dollar is, is important, is actually critical in terms of where we see oil prices range bound. But it's not the most important factor in the context of the outlook on supply demand. And I think that will tell that will differentiate investors who step in in this oil price route versus those that don't, because they don't believe yeah. that there is a sustained deficit on the back of this.